Hello everyone, my name is Maddie. I'm one of the children's librarians at the Chatham Library. I've got a couple more crafts for us to do today. Um, all of them actually have to do with the handprint. Um, we're not going to use paint today. Instead, we're going to trace our handprint out onto colored pieces of paper, uh, cut it out, and then turn it into something fun. Um, the first craft that I have aligned for us is an animal. Um, I am going to do a tiger. Um, you can use your imagination, uh, pick different colors of paper, and think of different animals. You could turn this into um, like a lion, a uh, cheetah, or any other big animal. Think of different things. I'm sure you could probably make an elephant out of your hand if you really wanted to. Um, use your imagination, brainstorm, figure out what you could do. But I'm going to show you how I made this little tiger here. So um, tigers, when you think of tigers, they're orange with black stripes. So we are going to need a piece of orange paper, and that's over here. So I'll get my paper out. There we go. Here we are, and it's a handprint. So I'm going to put my hand down, really anywhere on the paper. That's good. Get yourself a pencil, and go ahead and trace around your hand. Um, if you are right-handed, Put down your left hand, trace around. If you're left-handed, put down your right hand and trace around. Whichever way is easiest for you. I'll go ahead and, since I'm mostly right-handed, I will go ahead and trace my left hand here. Try and get close to your finger, but it's okay if it's not perfect. And then once you get all the way around, oh, that's very hard to see. I'll go over it in Sharpie. <laughs> you think I'd learned my lesson by now. <laughs> when you trace your hand, there's going to be different bumps around the knuckles, and that's okay. If you want to leave them, go for it. If you Want to just smooth it out? That's fine too. So when you take your hand away, you'll have this kind of shape. And then you'll just connect the bottom there. Round it out as best you can. So there you are. Messed up a little bit, but it's okay. We're just going to cut that out now. Do your best to follow along the lines. Take your time, it's not a rush. I do different handcrafts all the time throughout the year. Definitely around Thanksgiving, it's always turn your handprint into a turkey. <laughs> if you guys do different animals, you'll have to let me know what you do. Post pictures in the comments so I can see them. That'd be exciting. So I've got my hand <laughs> cut out here. You can use whatever whatever way you want him to face. These hand these fingers are actually his legs, so he's going to be down like this. If you want him, uh, whichever way you want him to face, it really doesn't matter. I'll have him face this way, so they can be facing each other. All right, from here. If you want to go ahead and make the stripes on his body, you can. I did some on the top and then some on each leg, so we'll go ahead and do that. The key to making the stripes is just drawing triangles. And then coloring them in. 
pretty easy. You can make them different sizes, different lengths, different widths. That's good for the top, and then I'll just do a couple on the legs. And you can either alternate the stripes on different sizes, sides of the legs, sorry, like I did. I did one on this side, then this side, then this side, and this side, or you can put them all on the same side. The fun part is no two tigers look exactly the same. Every tiger has different stripes. I'm using a Sharpie for this, but you can use either a um, Sharpie or a marker of some sort. You can use colored pencils or crayons if you have them. Whatever you've got at home, that'll work just fine. If you are using a Sharpie, again, just make sure you don't color on your table. All right, so I've got stripes on every legs, every leg and some on the top here. Um, next we're going to create the face. So it's a little difficult to make, but stick with me, we'll get there. So we're using the same paper that we cut our hand out of, and just somewhere where there's still space, right here, I'll, do, I'll use the Sharpie so you guys can see this time. Actually, I've got a thinner one here. And his head is kind of an oval, and it's got round ears. I don't know if you can see this one here. There we go. So he's got round ears, kind of a... I don't know if that's more of an oval or a rectangle. You can give him whatever kind of face shape you want. I'll do this one as a... Uh, well, we'll see what happens. The goal is kind of an oval, but we'll see what actually happens. All right, that's his face shape. That's what we're gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Then just go ahead and draw his ears over it. <laughs> They're a little big, but that's okay. He's gonna have big ears for a tiger. <laughs> All right. If you want to go ahead and do the um, stripes on his face now, you can, or we can wait until we get it all cut out and um, we get the white for his nose. So I'll cut this out here. Make sure you don't cut off the ears. Make sure you cut those out as well. Keep them attached to the rest of his head. There you go. You can either leave it on this side, or if you turn it over, you won't have any of the um, black marks from drawing it. All right. And to get the white for his nose, got a white piece of paper here. This is um, the one from the uh, the craft I've already finished. So I'll go ahead and use the same paper. And a fun way to do this, I just um, took the cutout head and put it right over top so I could trace out that shape and then once I had that traced out I can use that to figure out how big um, I want the nose and mouth to be.
All right. I've got it traced out, and this doesn't have to be perfect because now you're just guessing how big you want the face to be. And, or the nose and mouth, there we go. And that you'll just kind of sketch in here. You can make it however big or small you want. So that's what I've got there. We're just going to cut out the smaller circle. So we're, we're not cutting out the one with the dark outline, we're cutting out this little circle. Alright, there we go. We're just going to stick it right on top of there. And I've got a glue stick. You can use, uh, if you have a glue stick, great. Um, if not, if you have uh, Elmer's glue or some, any other glue, really, that'll work. Or even tape if you have it. I'm just going to put it right there. Perfect. All right, now if we get back out that black marker, we can finish drawing up his face. Now for the one that I made earlier, I've got some stripes on his cheeks and on top of his head. He's got two eyes, a nose, a mouth, some whiskers there, and of course ears. You can draw that up however you wanna do. I'm gonna give this tiger a square nose. So he's got a square nose and the mouth I went ahead and drew in. Let's do the whiskers. And I'll do the eyes here. I'll give him little happy eyes. <laughs> you can draw in the ears. There we are, and I guess you could do a regular cat if you wanted to, like a house cat. If you left it like this and didn't do any stripes on the body, you could do that. To do the stripes on here, though, I'm going to do more triangles and color them in. There's this happy little face there. Go ahead and cap your marker and we'll put the head on the tiger here. I've got a bit of a bigger hand, so <laughs> when I put this on, his head's all the way down there. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of the thumb here just so his head can be up here. It doesn't have to be rounded or anything. You can just give it a snip there we go. How does that look? Looks good. So I'll go ahead and glue it there. <laughs> he looks like a happy camper. <laughs> Now there's one thing missing, we still have to give him a little tail. So let's do that. From that same orange paper that we had, go ahead and draw out whatever kind of shape tail you want. This is the one that I had before, it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Hmm. Say this is where the, it's connected to the body.
he's going to have a little squiggly tail. And tigers have rounded tails there, so that's what it's going to look like. Go ahead and cut that out. And we'll get to put more stripes on here. There we go. Set that aside for now. And you can go ahead and see how it's going to look on them. Your little tiger. Not bad. You can change the angle. You can either have it down low, up high, wherever you want. I think his is going to go down low. And you can go ahead and tape it. And then you can either do the stripes first or you can tape it first, whichever you want to do. There we go, I'll do some more stripes and then he'll be good to go. And then at the end of the tail, on the one that I made before, I just colored the end of it all black. But you can do whatever you want to do, you can uh, change the design up. If your tiger wants to be polka dotted, he can be polka dotted. And there you have a happy little tiger. <laughs> He's pretty cute. There you are. And again, you don't have to do a tiger. You can do whatever animal you want to do. Um, it's a fun little handcraft. The other craft I have for us to do today also has to do with the hand. And I thought since Mother's Day is coming up, well, it's a bit hard to go out and shop to get a Mother's Day card. So I can show you how to make one and you can do it with flowers but I did flower crafts last week so I made a cactus plant <laughs> and it's a little Mother's Day card so you can open it up and write Happy Mother's Day and write whatever you want to do in there and I'll show you how to make this now. So most cactuses, cacti if you will, are green so go ahead and get yourself a green piece of paper. Actually, save paper, use the ones that I had before. I'll just use the rest of this. Will I have enough? No, I, I think I'll need a whole sheet of paper for this. So, since it's a card, we'll have to fold it in half. And I'll show you how to do that. Because that's the card right here where your pinky is. That's where the folding of paper is going to be. So if you've got your full piece of paper, fold it in half. Alright, so I've got that fold here, and that is the side that your pinky is going to go on. If you are right-handed, you put your left hand against the edge there and then trace it with your right hand. If you're left-handed, you can turn the paper over, put your right hand, there's the fold, put your right hand against the fold there with your pinky and then trace on that side. And I'll, there's the fold, so I'm going to put my pinky here and I'm going to carefully trace it. I'll do a I'll go ahead and do this. Make sure your hand doesn't move. All 
All right, I've gotten almost all the way around except for where my wrist is, so I'm going to take my hand off. That's what I've got so far, and just connect it to the edge there. There you are. If there are any parts that aren't um, straight or you just want to fix them up, you can go ahead and take your marker or pencil, whatever you're doing, and make the line thicker so you know where to cut when you cut this out. There we go. We're going to go ahead and cut this out now. Yes. And make sure you keep it folded because we want it to be we want to be able to unfold it and it's a little card for us. So keep it folded there. Get your scissors and start cutting it out. This card doesn't have to be for Mother's Day. If you have, somebody has a birthday coming up or um, some other celebration and you want to give a card to somebody, this is a wonderful way to do it. So there I've cut it out, and when you open it up, there you are. It should be connected from the top of the pinky all the way down to where the wrist is. So this was the hand that I put up, and now there's two of them. All right, we will go ahead and set this aside for now. For the one I have, it's sitting in a nice little bowl here, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, pick a color, any color that you want. I made a red bowl before. I think I'm going to make... Hmm. I'll make a blue bowl. I'll do a yellow bowl. And then it'll have a little blue plate underneath. Alright. So for this, you take your piece of paper, go ahead and lay it down. And the easiest way to do this is to set your hand on top of it. And wherever you think you want the hand to come up to, so if I wanted the bowl to cover that much of the hand, then uh, make that level with the top of the paper. And then I'll take my pencil, or I'll do a Sharpie so you guys can see it, and I'll draw around it, because you want your bowl to be wider than the hand itself, so that it looks like it fits inside. So you draw it where the bowl goes. And you have to draw it so that it's big enough so it covers the entire hand. There we go. You can round out the edges. And just do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously mine isn't a clean line. I went over it a couple times there. But that's what it's going to look like, so we'll go ahead and cut that out. There we have a bowl. And this is just going to go... Here's your hand card. It's just going to go like that, so it looks like your little cactus is in a bowl. And we're going to go ahead and glue, we're going to glue that on there. But the thing is, we have to make sure we only glue the front side of the card. So when your card opens up, the bowl will stay on this side. All right. Take your glue, and we'll put it on the bowl here. 
You don't have to cover the whole bowl because remember it's the bowl is bigger than the hand down here. So remember where you about had it. Go ahead and place it down, hold it together. And there's a bowl. And you can just make sure it stays on the front part. Open it up, make sure it's all good. All right, with the bowl done, now we can make the little plate that the bowl is sitting on. And I said I was gonna make that out of blue. So let's get a blue piece of paper here. Do I have blue? No, I don't. Okay, so a new piece of paper. And I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did before. Um, take this and place it on the top here, however you much you think is going to be covered by the little plate. Take your Sharpie, and you want it, the plate to be a little bit bigger than the bowl at the bottom. And then you just want to cover that up. Here, I'll turn it to the side. And then you just want to connect the edges here. That's what I ended up with. You can make it more round if you want, or you can flatten it out more. Just make sure that the bottom of the bowl is covered. Right, go ahead and cut that out. All right, that's what it's gonna look like, not bad. We'll go ahead and glue that on too. Hold it on tight, make sure it stays. And there you go. There's all that. So all the cutting out is pretty much done. Now it's just decorating time. So when you think of cacti, normally you think of the little prickly beans on there. And all you have to do is just draw a bunch of lines all over your cactus. You can do as much or as little as you want. I did a lot on the last one, so I'll do a few on this one. How I do it is I just go down one finger at a time, and I'll do the thumb here. And then for the middle of the hand here, keep putting them as uh, little pricklies on there. All right, and that looks good to me. And you can stop there, or if you want, some cacti have flowers on them. So I did some flowers on this one. This one doesn't have any, that's fine. I like them the way they are. So you can either draw out and cut little flowers. I'll show you how I did that. Um, got some red little left over. I'll make some more tiny flowers. I'm not the best at drawing flowers, but it really doesn't matter. Um, if this is for Mother's Day, I'm sure whoever you give it to is just gonna be very happy and very pleased with how cute it is. Whenever I'm drawing, oh, I'm going to have to do this in Sharpie. <laughs> Whenever I am drawing flowers, I start with a U. I guess that would be a U. Turn the paper, and I do it again. Turn the paper, and I do it again. So it makes flower drawing easier, but it, um... Doesn't look the best, but I'm doing doing what I can, and that's all right. 
So after connecting a bunch of U's, that's what I've got together. And if you cut that out, you can put it on. And once you do, to make that center of the flower, you can use whatever color shows up on uh, the construction paper that you have. I just used a black marker to draw the middle of the flower. Here, I'll go ahead and cut this one out so I can show you. Very difficult because you have to, these are kind of tiny flowers, so it doesn't make it any easier to cut out. <laughs> All right, I've got that cut out, and all you would have to do is take your glue stick. Glue one side of it to wherever you want on here, and I'll stick it on this one. Um, I'll put it right here. So once it's on, I'll cover this first. Take your black marker, and you can go ahead and just color a little circle in the middle here. And there's another flower. You can add designs or anything you want to the bowl. Actually, there we go. I'll add some lines to this bowl here. I think that'll be cool. They don't have to be perfect. There we go. There it is. add polka dots or um, swirls different shapes whatever you want on the little plate you can do the uh, same thing to the plate as the bowl if you want um, after that all you have to do open it up and write whatever you want in here so for mine don't tell my mom and hopefully mom's not watching this and I'm just gonna pick There's not a whole lot of colors that'll show up very well on here. I just had, I'll just use a purple marker and write whatever you want to write to, if it's for Mother's Day, you can write a note about that. If it's for a birthday or an anniversary or just because you want to give somebody a card, that works too. Just write your little message here inside. I wrote, Happy Mother's Day, I heart you, from Maddie. <laughs> Hopefully she'll like this one. <laughs> All right. You guys will have to show me pictures of what you create. And if you think of new ideas for the, or different um, animals, let me know. That'll be exciting. I hope you enjoyed these crafts. I definitely miss seeing everyone at the library. Wish I um, could put out more videos, but I'll have to think of more crafts to put out. For next time. All right, I will see everybody next time, hopefully. Everybody have a good week and bye bye.